Ladies and gentlemen, please be silent and observe the national anthem of Malaysia. Assalamualaikum, peace be upon you. Selamat sore, sawadika. Selamat datang and welcome everyone to the ITC IMTGT webinar, Understanding Muslim Friendly Tourism. My name is Fitra. Here today with me is my co-host, Silas Lo Yujin, and we are from the Islamic Tourism Center of Malaysia. Good morning, everyone. Thank you to my co-host and colleague, Mr. Fitra. Uh, thank you everyone for joining us today as we present to you the concept of Muslim friendly tourism or in short MFT. Today's intellectual discourse will be the first step towards achieving a common goal between the three IMTGT member countries in tapping into the Muslim tourist market through having a broader perspective and understanding of the MFT concept and standards of Muslim friendly hospitality. This is in line with Malaysia's proposed programs activities for the development and promotion of MFT and standards within the IMTGT region. Before we begin, I would like to call upon Mr. Mazlan Kamaruddin to recite a prayer for blessings for all of us. Mr. Mazlan, if you please. Thank you very much, Mr. Fitra. For non-Muslim, you may pray according to your religion and beliefs. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah. Uh, Mr. Bazan, can you unmute? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamin. Wa salatu wa salam ala ashrafil mursalin. Wa ala alihi wa ashabi ajma'in. Allahumma ya Allah. On this glorious day in conjunction with the webinar on understanding Muslim friendly tourism, we uphold our hands to pray gratefully on your infinite favor to us till we can live in peace and harmony to perform our tasks as your servants. O oh Allah, we ask your blessing to make these occasions in success. Allahumma ya hayu ya qayyum ya dhal jalali wal ikram. We ask your mercy for beneficial knowledge and sustenance which is good and acceptable deeds. Ya hayu ya qayyum bi rahmatika astaghith. O oh Allah, O oh sustainer, in your mercy, we plead for rescue and protections from the trials and tribulations resulting from this COVID-19 pandemic. O Allah, bless us with a silver lining in this difficult time and grant us peace in our heart. 
Allahumma la sahla illa ma ja'altahu sahla wa anta taj'alul huzna idza syi'ta sahla O oh Allah there is nothing made easy except what you make easy and you make the difficult easy if you wish Rabbana atina fid dunya hasanah wa fil akhirati hasanah wa qina azaban nar wa sallallahu ala sayidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabi wa sallam walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin Thank you Mr Mazlan Now we would like to call upon the secretary of secretary general of ministry of tourism arts and culture malaysia motek dato dr nozari hamad to address the audience in his opening speech dato dr nozari over to you bismillahirrahmanirrahim in the name of allah the all compassionate all merciful and peace be upon to prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his family and companions alhamdulillahirabbil alamin wassalatu wassalamu ala asyrafil anbiya wal mursalin wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajmain allahumma innaka khalaqul azim innaka sami'un alim innaka ghafurur rahim innaka rabbul arsyil azim yang berbahagia datuk dr muhammad razib bin haji hasan director general islamic tourism center Standing Chairman of the Indonesia Malaysia Thailand Growth Triangle IMTGT Working Group on Tourism Mr Bunsem Kunkai Deputy Director General Department of Tourism Kingdom of Thailand Head of Delegation Indonesia Mr Iman Santosa Director of International Relations Ministry of Tourism and Creative Economy Republic of Indonesia Head of Delegation Malaysia Dr Yasmin binti Yasim Senior Director Tourism Policy and International Affairs Division Ministry of Tourism Arts and Culture Malaysia Director of CIMT Mr Firdaus Dahlan okay. Distinguished Speakers Members of the Indonesia Malaysia Talent yes, Growth Triangle IMTGT representative of the center for IMTGT sub regional cooperation CIMT participants of this webinar ladies and gentlemen assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh may peace be upon you good morning and greetings from islamic tourism center since its establishment the members of the indonesia malaysia thailand growth triangle or IMTGT for short has cooperated in various fields and today I'm pleased to see so many of you here showing interest in yet another potential area of cooperation in the sub region that is Islamic tourism the ministry of tourism arts and culture malaysia is pleased to take the lead in this matter through our agency islamic tourism center or itc ITC was set up in 2009 with the specific aim of developing the Islamic tourism industry through research capacity building standards and certification training and branding through its effort the muslim friendly tourism branding concept was developed and later broadened to include the sphere of hospitality namely muslim friendly tourism and hospitality Despite the restrictions imposed by the pandemic, ITC has continued to serve its stakeholders by organizing training programs and webinars such as the one today. It also conducts research with the sole purpose of preparing tourism industry players for the reopening of tourism. Allow me to record my sincere thanks to ITC and CIMT for organizing this webinar for the benefit of the IMTGT members and stakeholders ladies and gentlemen as we all know the global tourism industry suffered huge impacts due to the pandemic and now we are prepared for its recovery it is important to recognize that travel planning and decision making made by travelers will be a little different post pandemic 
It is anticipated that such decisions will be largely based on the readiness of destinations as well as which destinations are perceived to be trusted and viewed favorably by travelers. While pent-up demand for travel will be high, tourists will likely make more considered travel choices, prioritizing health and safety above all as in their travel decisions. The anticipation to travel again will also mean that travelers must have a higher than usual expectations for the quality of their touristic experience. Well, all this means is that destinations will have to understand their new needs of travelers post-pandemic, ramp up their efforts to address those needs, and assure tourists that the tourism economy will be managed well amid the pandemic. Ladies and gentlemen, as we prepare for the reopening of tourism to welcome travelers to our shores, it may be worth noting that the Muslim tourism market is one segment not to be ignored by this sub-region, which already has a favorable reputation among global Muslims. The latest Global Muslim Travel Index, GMTI 2021 report, released just last month, indicated Malaysia and Indonesia as the top five Muslim-friendly tourist destinations among 140 countries evaluated. Meanwhile, Thailand was among the top five non-OIC countries deemed Muslim-friendly. At the same time, Southeast Asia was also considered among the top regions that had strong positioning to attract the interest of Muslim tourists. All this bodes well for us, member state of IMTGT, in terms of tapping into the Muslim tourist market in this region, as well as beyond. In preparing for the reopening of tourism in this region, it may be wise to consider Islamic tourism and the concept of Muslim-friendly tourism as the way forward. In addition, two things stand in favor with us today. One is the size of the Muslim tourist market within the region itself, with Southeast Asia Muslim population standing at about 260 million people. The other is the sheer wealth of assets and resources our three nations combined have in this region. This, I believe, puts us in a leading position as far as attracting the Muslim tourist market goes. As a sub-region, Indonesia, Malaysia, and Thailand have rich resources in terms of beautiful and attractive natural landscapes, unique culture, history, and world-renowned heritage sites. Delicious cuisines, warm and wonderful hospitality, exciting events, and many others. They are all assets that have potential to draw the interest of not only conventional tourists, but also the lucrative Muslim tourist market. We all see that many efforts be made to tap into this market. For example, Thailand has developed a dedicated website and app to help Muslim tourists explore Thailand. Indonesia is creating Muslim-friendly sporting events such as the Sharia Court Rathlon 2021, while Malaysia has established a standard for Muslim-friendly hospitality services, recognition programs for tourist guides and hotels, as well as having a strong halal certification programs led by the world-renowned Department of Islamic Development Malaysia, or JAKIM, among others. Moving forward, we may wish to leverage our individual strengths together to establish a compelling and attractive sub-regional tourist destinations that caters to pent up travel demand of Muslim tourists beyond this pandemic. Ladies and gentlemen, this brings us to the goal of today's webinar. 
understanding Muslim friendly tourism. That is to understand what Muslim friendly tourism is and how to deliver the tourism products and services that meet the Muslim tourist market's needs without, compri without compromising on their faith-based needs. At the same time, let's take the opportunity to leverage the cooperative efforts of our three nations and explore the areas and scopes of what the IMTGT sub-region standards on Muslim-friendly tourism and hospitality should cover. Through a lineup of respected academicians and industry practitioners, today's webinar is a sharing session among the potential of the Muslim tourist market, its size and its economic value contributions. We will also address the implementation of Muslim-friendly tourism and hospitality services, as well as the standards and frameworks developed. Malaysia will be sharing the hospitality standards we have established with the Standards Department of Malaysia, as well as how our tourism industry players have pivoted and applied Muslim-friendly branding in its hotel and hospitality services. The knowledge sharing and discourse for today will hopefully set the stage for the common understanding of the Islamic tourism concept and the application of Muslim-friendly tourism and hospitality branding for our sub-region. Subsequently, we may move forward as an institution to deliver the appropriate tourism products and services and cater the Muslim tourism market. It will be beneficial for Indonesia, Malaysia and Thailand to work together in strengthening our Muslim-friendly tourism and hospitality offerings so that this triangle will be seen as a key destination for Muslim tourists to this region. In this respect, cooperative efforts between member countries may take the form of destination marketing initiatives, product development, exchange of expertise and best practices, as well as training and capacity building. Malaysia, through the Islamic Tourism Centre, is ready to support your aspirations in doing so. Through ITC's range of webinars, such as the one today, training programs, research, consultancy and advisory services, standards and certification initiatives, ITC is here to help you plan and build your organizations towards meeting the market needs of the Muslim tourist market together. Before I end, I wish everyone a fruitful webinar to expand our understanding and appreciation for the Muslim tourist market so we can move forward together. Please stay on to the end to participate in a contest where you will be able to win prizes from our partner and Muslim-friendly recognized hotel, Sunway Resort, Sunway City, Kuala Lumpur. Wabilahi Taufiq wa Hidayah. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you. Waalaikumsalam. Thank you, Dr. Dr. Norzari, for the keynote address. So before we proceed with our first presenter, I would like to request everyone to turn on your cameras for a group photo session. Please turn on your cameras and our secretariat will take a screenshot of, of all the participants. So uh, there, there's um, 13 pages here. So uh, our secretariat will be taking one by one. Okay, so the, for the first page, everyone, look into the camera and smile. One, two, three. Okay, next page. One, two, three. Okay, third page. Well, one, two, three. Fourth page. 
Page number five, one, two, three. Turn on your cameras, everyone. Page number six, one, two, three. Page seven, one, two, three. Page number eight. One, two, three. Page nine. One, two, three. Page ten. One, two, three. Page eleven. One, two, three. Page twelve. One, two, three. Final page. One, two, and three. All right, thank you very much for your cooperation. So just a reminder, uh, our, we will be having a contest by the end of the webinar whereby you can win uh, hotel vouchers from our sponsors which is sunway pyramid hotel so thank you everyone for the group photo and without further hesitation let me introduce you to you our first speaker uh, associate professor dr muhammad hafi sanafia is the deputy dean faculty hotel faculty of hotel and tourism management mara university of technology uitm he is a certified hotel industry analyst and is the executive editor for the Journal of Hospitality, Tourism and Culinary Arts. He currently sits in the Tourism Educators Association of Malaysia Advisory Board and is a member of the Islamic Tourism Center's Board of Trustee. Dr. Hafiz's research interests are in tourism economics, destination competitiveness, and Muslim-friendly tourism and hospitality. He is also an active author that has written and co-written various research papers that are mostly indexed by Scopus and Web of Science. So without further ado, Thank you, Mr. Fitra. Uh, may I start now? Uh, yes, you may start now. Okay, thank you very much. Um, well, uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And um, good morning. First of all, uh, to Datuk Norzari Ahmad, the Secretary General of MOTEC. Uh, my friend, Prof. Ajang Datuk Dr. Mama Razif, the DG of ITC. Honorable tourism personnel uh, from Indonesia, Malaysia, Thailand, speakers, session moderators, uh, and also IMTGT webinars participants. First of all, I would like to thank the organizer for inviting me to be part of this important discussion sessions. As an accommodation, yeah, it is my great pleasure to be here today. Uh, and I believe that it is a timely initiative reflecting the growth trend of Muslim tourism today and also our vaccination programs. As we all understand, the global travel landscape changed uh, tremendously because of COVID-19 pandemic. Nonetheless, the growing Muslim populations worldwide caused a continuous rising of international demand, especially for Islamic-based tourism products and services. Uh, and the Islamic tourism concept was developed for many years ago. And perhaps uh, the definition of Islamic uh, tourism still stands still, uh, in which uh, it is an any activity, events, and experience undertaken in the state of travel that is in accordance with Islam teachings. Yeah? Uh, 
And Malaysia perhaps has been very committed towards the development of and promotions yeah, of the Islamic tourism by focusing on the Muslim friendly tourism and hospitality MFTH niche segments. And uh, again, uh, the, the COMSEX, which is a, a body that uh, governs and looks on the Islamic tourism concept, uh, define MFT as one of the developing segments in the world of tourism, in which it offer destinations yeah, that uh, design specifically to cater the Muslim travelers, and perhaps consider and even address the Muslim needs. Well, uh, just to share, I'm going. I'm. I'm. I'm going to focus more on the academic perspective of Islamic tourism. Perhaps the development of tourism destination is shaped by the demand for tourism activities and products. Yeah, uh, it is shaped by the tourism opportunities offered by the mix of attractions available in a particular destinations, and uh, notably for a destination to succeed, it is important, it is critical to deliver a quality tourism products, yeah, which are demanded by differentiated tourist segments. And in, in this case, it's the, the Muslim tourist segments. Uh, looking on the other hand, the tourism supply consists of an amalgamation of mix of attractions available. We are talking about the core resources. We are talking about the complementary resources. We are even talk about the, uh, the destination marketing, the destination management in which this tourism supply shapes the demand for a tourism uh, products and services in the specific countries or destinations. And in fact, we cannot deny that tourists in its their nature to invest themselves in tourism related activities such as eating, drinking, entertainment, shopping, traveling, uh, be it Muslim or non-Muslim tourists. However, uh, we, we also need to note that uh, for Muslim friendly travel, it, is, it must be based on the Islamic faith need facilities and services. So uh, perhaps the concept of uh, offering tourism services that are based on Islamic faith needs and facilities has been accepted by many Muslim and even non-Muslim tourism destinations. And uh, talking about Malaysia specifically, uh, uh, to support the special niche demand of Muslim travelers, uh, Malaysian government uh, and the ITC, they offer Muslim friendly hotels, availability of halal foods, the prayers facilities, family friendly entertainment, uh, safety, the security and uh, other complementary conditions of uh, tourism products. Perhaps the first of its kind is where ITC introduced the Muslim Friendly Accommodation Recognitions, MFA, which uh, it caters for the Muslim travelers uh, uh, in selecting uh, the hospitality services, especially the hotels. Uh, that are recognized under ENFA. And I'm very proud to say that there are more than 40 hotels that are currently recognized under ENFA. And uh, even uh, talking about the policy makings for Malaysia, the Muslim friendly tourism has was given an important role, eh, signifying the importance of this segment under the current national tourism policy NTP 2020 and 2030. Yep. Uh, perhaps. Uh, there are other countries that are uh, trying to become Muslim savvy, uh, talking about uh, Indonesia. Yep. In 2018, Indonesia launched the 10 national priority halal destination of GMTI, which is based on the GMTI index standard, which include Aceh, Riau, and other few destinations as their main halal tourism destination. I just want to quote based on a readings on last year, or I think, I think in 2019, um, Mr. Arif, uh, who is the Minister of Tourism of Indonesia, highlighted that. Uh, uh, I mean, previously he quoted, uh, he, he was quoted saying that there is, a, there is no need for uh, a standards for halal certifications because Indonesia is a well-known uh, 
Muslim countries. However, since then, they understand that in order to cater the demand and the needs of uh, Muslim travelers, uh, perhaps uh, you can see right now, the Indonesian government have tried their best to come up with their own certification of halal, uh, specifically on uh, certifying all the uh, tourism services uh, available in Indonesia, specifically on this uh, Islamic tourism destination such as Aceh and also Riau. Yep. Um, perhaps uh, looking at Thailand, uh, they uh, as a non-Muslim destinations uh, introduces the concept of uh, Muslim friendly spas where uh, female clients are accommodated in private rooms. Uh, this is where they, 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 their target will be on the Middle East tourists. And next, talking about Japan, yeah, uh, Japan is one of the emerging uh, Muslim tourism destination in which they ensure that all this, uh, uh, they make it available, the halal Japanese food on the menu, prayer rooms at public places, even uh, their airports were considered as one of the best uh, Muslim uh, uh, airports that offer Muslim services yeah? and also facilities. Uh, this was added with a lot of mobile apps uh, developed to help Muslim uh, traveling to Japan in order to locate and identify halal products uh, in Japanese tourism destinations. And uh, additionally, uh, Taiwan uh, even produced a Muslim guide with prayer times, a list of halal restaurants and mosques. And even the government, uh, it's a, a non-Muslim government, has also started issuing halal certification for restaurants and hotels that meet the requirement. And uh, perhaps uh, one of the advantage of this market is that um, uh, it is so geographically uh, dispersed. Yeah? Uh, perhaps uh, we, we have to look uh, on the practitioner's aspect as well as, as the academician aspect. Looking at the academician aspect, uh, I would like to highlight a few studies that were uh, written and published recently yeah, by our researchers. And uh, talking about this is uh, this paper, determinants of Muslim travelers halal food, consumption attitude and behavior attention were published by yours truly, Hafiz Anafia, and also Nurul Alia Akila. So uh, for this particular studies, we focus on uh, assessing uh, the Muslim travelers halal consumption while traveling to the non-Muslim uh, destination, and we found that these uh, Muslim travelers' uh, consumptions yeah, uh, relies heavily on their religiosity level yeah, and also how they perceive themselves as a Muslim and who could influence their decisions making. And uh, perhaps uh, we also highlighted the critical aspect of a Muslim market in which they travel for leisure, but they are urged to comply with their Islamic teaching and religiosity. You know? As they travel, they still need to practice their faith. And the higher the level of religiosity level, the more attitude they display towards consuming halal food. So uh, this is actually vital, crucial for tourism marketers to understand that uh, in order for you to uh, market yourself among the core Muslim market, there is a need to ensure that uh, halal food is made available. Yep. Uh, and uh, in order to ensure that uh, the information was uh, received and uh, consumed by these travelers, there is a need for halal certification, a standard halal certification among the non-Muslim destination. Uh, we need to understand that this uh, Muslim relies heavily on opinions of other people who have experience, prior experience, in visiting this non-Muslim tourism destination. So perhaps uh, there is an important for tourism marketers and tourism policy makers to, um, let's say, focus more on the user-generated contents available in the social media. Uh, as we know that uh, the social media have become one of the main referral points for travelers to make plans and to decide uh, uh, for their travel uh, uh, say, itineraries and everything. And uh, perhaps uh, looking at another uh, settings, which is 
halal tourism as Japan economic and diplomatic strategy. We 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 reviewed this paper by Wibia Nigar and Amina 2018. They found that the halal tourism strategy in Japan comprises of offering Muslim specific complementary services while maintaining Japanese local wisdom. So this is another uh, point to ponder. I mean, uh, it doesn't mean that you have to, as a tourism marketer, you have to provide uh, uh, a specific Muslim uh, complementary services in which you can embed uh, the local wisdom, uh, the local practices with halal uh, services. And the concept of uh, communities in which they treat Muslim travelers as a community, as an economic community, which apply implicitly to the Japan tourism product or facilities related to halal tourism. So they specifically develop specific Japanese tourism product and facilities for this specific niche market. And the aspect of Japanese halal tourism can be divided into three points, which restaurants offering halal food, hotel implementation according to the Islamic needs, and, <coughs> excuse me, and daily prayer time announcement. This uh, was uh, uh, was uh, exercised in hotels and also other hospitality services. Uh, perhaps one of the main reason Japanese receive a lot of uh, independent uh, uh, travelers among women, Muslim women, are there because uh, they offer women only carriage on its metro. Uh, perhaps this is uh, introduced for the local community, but it accommodate the needs of Muslim women visitors. Uh, in addition, uh, based on our uh, based on their studies, they also found that the Japanese uh, tourism marketers came out with these pictograms yeah, in order to help and assist the travelers uh, to identify what type of food are they eating. Yeah. The, the Muslim try to avoid uh, non-halal foods, and definitely uh, language is a barrier when you are visiting Japan because they are using a lot of uh, uh, Japanese language rather than English language uh, as in in, the, in signing in in the signage and everything. So perhaps by having this, it helps the uh, travelers to identify what type of food are they eating and to make sure that uh, the foods that they eat is halal and are acceptable. Next, we go beyond uh, the, us, the Asian countries. We look on the New Zealand halal tourism, uh, in which uh, this study by Asad Mohsin, uh, published in the High Index Journal, look on the stakeholders' perceptions and implication. Uh, by interviewing the tourism stakeholders, including the community, they found out that the training program for staff in the hospitality uh, sector is vital because they need to be prepared to cater with the demands and wants of these uh, Islamic or Muslim travelers. And uh, they also found that the information about halal certification is relevant, important, in which it uh, affect the demand uh, by these Muslim travelers. And uh, perhaps talking about halal practices, um, they make sure that they did not treat the Muslim travelers as a separate market because Again, besides the special needs, they behave normally as other tourists. Yeah, they want they, they go for leisure activities, and uh, they prefer uh, to uh, get memorable experience. Yeah, and perhaps um, the stakeholders also found that they are still challenged by multiple perceptions of Allah. This is one of the things that I think uh, have been have highlighted by many researchers talking about uh, the different type of halal certification. So they, they are unsure of how to make the changes and how these changes will complicate the product and the services that already exist. And perhaps they, 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 the panels yeah, agreed, uh, even though New Zealand Muslim friendly uh, receive uh, insufficient awareness among the community, still it is uh, an emerging uh, market in which indirectly will benefit the local community. So this is uh, uh, actually a good information uh, inputs to the practitioners. Yeah? And looking at the South Korea halal tourism policy, uh, a study by Malinda uh, highlighted that uh, the, 
the enforcement of uh, terminal high altitude air defense by South Korea in collaboration with America got chi the Chinese government uh, angered the Chinese government in which they prohibited all outbound Korean troop package uh, and perhaps the reason why the South Korean focus on the Muslim market is, is for them to search for recovery market. Yeah. Since then, uh, the Korean tourism organizations are very active. They even come up with the Korean Halal Food Guidebooks, guide perhaps with the helps of the K-Pops and also the, uh, the influx of Korean restaurants in uh, their tourism market, in, in other tourism market, such as Malaysia and Indonesia, it actually generates demands uh, by travelers to visit uh, Korea. And there are a lot of improvement done in terms of facilities. Uh, as you can see here, even the Korean, uh, the Korean tourism organization has developed uh, around 135 to 252 halal restaurants. I mean, this is specifically a direct uh, supports to the to the to the practitioners to the industries in order for them to offer halal food and services, and uh, I believe that um, this is what we call strengthening the soft diplomacy power. Uh, KTO, eh, the, the Korean Tourism Organization, also collaborated with halal food sector, the, with UAE, Brunei, and Indonesian government, but because perhaps this is where they found their biggest uh, market. Uh, coming from and uh, indirectly it creates uh, uh, wants and needs by these uh, uh, UAE, Brunei and Indonesian tourists to travel to Korea because knowing uh, knowing that uh, uh, the halal foods are available and most of these uh, products are uh, imported from these countries. Well, um, next, the last one is talking about what's next. Yep. What's next? So perhaps uh, the technology also influenced uh, the MFT. Yeah. Uh, so a study done by Pedro uh, Questovalino on sustainable, smart, and Muslim-friendly tourism destination. They found that smart applications are useful for tourists. And the reason why the tourists love uh, technology and smart applications is that uh, it create a value creation process and offer personalized experience, which allow them to plan and enjoy for it. Again, I believe most of you understand the uh, free independent travelers are one of the biggest market, uh, not only for conventional uh, tourism market, but also for MFT. Yeah. Uh, again, the Muslim population is also younger than the global average, and they are the one of the key motors for growth in Muslim travel, and perhaps we have to agree that they are very attached to new technologies. So uh, the, the, the study advised the official bodies to be the first to invest in Muslim market segment. So uh, the investment on smart technologies are quite expensive. So the official bodies with the support of the government should be the one who spearhead the, uh, the modification or the changes to a smart destination. And the private sector will follow suits because they will realize the potential and the uh, in providing muslim friendly services online and uh, there are a lot of uh, argument who are the currently smartest and most sustainable muslim friendly destination i'm going to report the top 20 sustainable smart tourist destination based on this data this is a data looking at here thailand uk japan taiwan australia Canada, Spain, New Zealand, South Africa. These are the countries that have developed uh, Muslim-friendly specific apps or websites. Yep. And you can see that most of them, most of them have the lowest uh, percentage of Muslim in population. Uh, the reason, the main reason why uh, most of them focus more on the smart apps is because of the information dissemination. They understand that they can rely on the image, they can rely on the local community to disseminate information about their Muslim tourism uh, products. Therefore, they use this uh, online visibility, online apps to help uh, to cater for uh, creating the demand and also supporting the tourist needs, uh, the Muslim tourist needs uh, in uh, visiting their uh, destination. And perhaps, as you can see here, most of the uh, organization that support these uh, apps or websites uh, coming from uh, the official authority. Yeah? 
uh, and the business association, and perhaps I was also uh, supported by the private sectors. Well, uh, in conclusions, I can say that, yeah, I can say that the Muslim friendly uh, support, supply and demand goes beyond. Yep, yep. Uh, I mean, if you, if you look on the advantage of this Muslim market, uh, it is so geographically dispersed. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I, I agree that there is a predominantly Muslim population in the Middle East and North Africa. Uh, I mean, regions, I mean, perhaps, but there are also other Muslim uh, in other parts of the world. Uh, talking about the ASEAN, the ASEAN uh, member states, we have 230 million of Muslim, which demonstrate uh, how big the Muslim tourist market potential. Uh, again, uh, it is vital for participating countries to ensure Islamic tourism is within the core strategies, yeah, and also to embark on the modern technologies. Yeah? Uh, talking about the uh, Halal Muslim uh, MFT apps, uh, I'm just going to share a, a recent study found by our researchers talking about uh, from where do Muslim travelers get their information and the importance of satisfaction on the halal information required. So the information sources and selection coming from the peers or reference group. So this is one of the group that uh, ITC perhaps or should look into uh, the international uh, research engine. Yeah, uh, Research is where, uh, I mean, Google, Yahoo, where travelers do their research. Specialized tourism website must be uh, modernized, must be uh, uh, must have corporate image, and also the Muslim travel guide in which we need a proper guide uh, apps or services to help them uh, uh, to help the tourists in get, getting the information. And perhaps the most important thing is that the satisfaction of the halal information required. We need to make sure that the information shared in this platform are in line with what been shared in the social media. Yeah, perhaps besides um, ensuring that, we also need to make sure that the information delivered in the online uh, platform, uh, I mean, is the actual experience that they will get when they visit that particular destination. So um, again, as I, I would like to conclude my sessions, uh, the social media, the online visibility and having an apps or an online website is important because during COVID-19, many tourists are planning for future travel and they refer a lot on social media, they refer a lot on av available online information. And perhaps this is the time, this is the right time talking about restarting the tourism, we have to restart uh, the availability of tourism information available online to moderate such information and perhaps utilize the social media platforms such as Facebook and Instagram rather than sharing uh, what are happening in that particular organization, yeah? meetings, uh, webinars, but focusing more on promoting the tourism uh, products. You keep on posting. I mean, uh, I've seen um, uh, Instagram page like uh, Tourism Perak, Tourism uh, Terengganu, even uh, Tourism Malaysia have been posting more than 10 or 20 uh, uh, posts in a day. And this is where you are, you, are, you are pushing pressure, you are making your destination visible. So I believe other destinations should do that. But uh, Again, the, there's a high responsibility, important responsibility uh, for our Islamic or Muslim friendly tourism organization to push more information related to Islamic tourism. So uh, before I end up my sessions, uh, I would like to congratulate ITC on your success of uh, as a recipient of the Strategic Business Alliance Award at the Brand Laureate World Halal Best Brand E-Branding Awards 2021. I strongly believe as, as, as an accreditation is a recognition of ITC's award, uh, efforts eh, in formulating new strategies within the Islamic tourism concept. 
and uh, to ensure the business continuity and sustainability of the Islamic tourism segment in Malaysia. So for that, thank you very much. I rest my case. Thank you very much, Dr. Hafiz, for your insightful presentation, which covered a wide segment of markets in the Muslim-friendly tourism sector, such as ASEAN, East Asia, Oceania, and also for future steps for the Muslim-friendly tourism destinations, and also for your kind wishes to ITC. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions for our speakers, kindly leave them in the chat box, or during the question and answer session later, you can raise your hand via the reaction button below. Ladies and gentlemen, our next speaker, Dato Ilya Zainal Abidin, he is a chairman of Ample Prospects Sandiram Berhad, a hotel management company specializing in Islamic hotel concept. He has more than 40 years of experience in the hotel industry, 20 of which he served with the hotel with the Hilton International chain. Dato Ilyas has made a breakthrough and caught the industry by surprise when he mooted the idea of transforming conventional hotels into what is known today as Muslim-friendly hotels. This was derived after observing the change in consumer behavior. Dato Ilyas has also served in numerous positions in hospitality-related functions, both in government bodies and NGOs, such as President of Malaysia Associations of Hotels, MAH, Board Member of Tourism Malaysia, Board Member of Human Resources Development Fund, Ministry of Human Resources, Honorary Fellow Member of the Confederation of Tourism, Hotel and Catering Management UK, Secretary General for ASEAN Tourism Association, ASEANTA, President for ARA, ASEAN Hotel Restaurant Association, and Board of Trustees of Islamic Tourism Center, ITC. His vast experience in the field has enabled him to see the importance of inculcating Islamic values among the workforce, particularly in instilling understanding of Islamic teachings and religious obligations in order to be productive. This has inevitably changed the negative perception of the public towards the image of the workforce in the hotel industry. For the initiatives and innovation that he has introduced and implemented, he has been awarded several prestigious awards as a testimony and recognition by the industry players. So without further ado, we would like to invite Dato Ilyas on his presentation, Venture Strategies Potentials in the Targeting the Muslim Travel Market. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. All praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Blessings and salutations to our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam Yang berbahagia Datuk Nur Azri Hamad Secretary General Ministry of Tourism my good friend Datuk Dr Razif the Director General of Islamic Tourism Center fellow speakers colleagues in the tourism industry ladies and gentlemen the pandemic has created a lot of hurt things and of course new normal including my current look is a bit uh, different it, it's also part of the new normal i hope uh, things will change for the better slide next slide as we all know covid 19 has created a global pandemic since the early 2020 causing major impact on all economies and tourism is probably the worst hit of the lot. Many tourism players have ceased business and thousands of employees have lost their jobs. Whilst tourism is considered almost dead for now, but personally, I believe it will never be permanently wiped out from the face of this earth, inshallah. Let's make our, continue to make our prayers that the country will become safe and beginning to accept COVID also as part of normal life and we live with COVID, uh, the virus, as our population gets more prepared and the global population gets more prepared through immunization. 
more more percentage of the population of the globe is getting a two dose of vaccine and and hopefully this will be becoming close to normal it may not be totally normal but over a period of time it will come back to to normal inshallah whilst this is happening many countries are making preparation to reopen their borders to welcome tourists with a variety of offerings i believe unless and until you make a new uh, offerings it is quite hard to attract uh, tourists to your destinations in particular if it is a non-muslim destination i have today given a uh, given a topic to to discuss what new opportunities can be presented in non-muslim destination to attract muslim market next slide once the borders are open unless the deal is good and new products are offered i personally believe the people are tired people want to go out and at the same time people want to have a good holiday covid 19 has taught muslims in particular to be a little bit more a practicing muslim therefore we can see that their choices of holidays choices of places they go to visit eat and shop etc will be a little bit more selective now because they would like to make sure that nothing is compromised in the process next my my question my question is why go to a crowded place why go the, the 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 providers should not be going and should not be offering products that everybody else is offering so we should be carving or they should be carving a niche but why muslim friendly because this is a very large population is representing a very large community and i believe this is something that you know travelers will want to travel go visit but at the same time do not want to compromise their faith in particular the islamic faith next mm -hmm. as i said earlier why muslim friendly because one fifth of the global population is uh, muslim you're looking at about 1.8 billion or going and it is steadily rising uh, it's a fast gaining momentum if you include all the uh, rate of conversion coming from time to time the population growth in the muslim community is getting larger and larger hence the cake for the uh, providers uh, to share is getting much much bigger next this is confirmed by the global muslim travel index uh, produced by crescent rating which was launched recently uh, the 2021 report whilst it is showing it has been showing a very very steady growth of course uh, the current state of affairs change because of uh, the covid pandemic but uh, the projections remain uh, positive so i think uh, for for probably for the other group may not be as as positive as as uh, this in my in my opinion the next being locked down uh, being locked up in a, a lockdown position in many countries in particular uh, malaysia and the whole region in this region uh, people are very very eager to go out and see places and this time they have been missing opportunities to be with their families so they will be traveling but then i break down the the, the various segments of uh, travelers family travel is going to be one major segment 
then the normal leisure travelers, followed by the normal business travelers who will continue to visit because of business reasons. Then we have the millennials, which is a very, very strong uh, percentage of the entire uh, tourism community. We believe that it is somewhere between 36 to 40 percent of the Muslim travelers will be millennials, including the female Muslim single travelers. Next. We know very well that the it is also shown here if a destination is still considering why they should cater for Muslims. Take a look at the non-OIC countries that has managed to somehow bring Muslims into their countries. And I believe this uh, report itself, the statistics uh, speaks volume that it is also an endorsement that uh, uh, Muslim friendly uh, tourism products will be here to stay indeed, inshallah. Next. If you look at the whole halal ecotourism, uh, sorry, uh, ecosystem, when halal was introduced way back, many failed to recognize in the beginning that this is going to be a major industry. But today, the non-Muslims have had a larger confidence in making produce of halal manufacturing, whether it is food and the related. And the halal certification was introduced and put in place, making this industry a trillion dollar industry, which is definitely an industry that everybody wants to put their finger on. But if this same next, if this same slide, uh, if this same uh, uh, methodology is applied, we can see that more and more after uh, COVID-19 pandemic, people are very concerned about hygiene. I believe the halal food will gain more popularity due to hygiene reason, because then halal food is known throughout that they do not compromise anything from as far as the hygiene is concerned. And also it is healthy and it is also proven through many research, scientific values in the halal food. So you consume halal food, it also promotes harmony. Given a destination which is non-Muslim, non sometimes when we visit those countries, and we have to be separated because we could not consume a particular food or the local delicacies because of non-halal. Imagine if that is done halal way, it will promote harmony. It can be making people sit down and eat on the same table together, even though their, their faith beliefs are different. Next. This is proven through a research done in Singapore when they convert three of the fast food chains, that is KFC, Burger King, and McDonald's. Their revenue levels resulted in a sharp increase of approximately 30%. Next. <clears throat> I firmly believe like halal, the process and the journey takes a while, but I strongly feel after being involved in also uh, establishing the very, very first uh, hotels uh, in Malaysia, which has got the Islamic uh, friendly or Muslim friendly, uh, this will be the buzzword. Muslim friendly tourism will be a new buzzword in the, in the, in the world. 
insha'Allah. Next. If you look at that slide, it is clearly shown some of the things that are required. It, this, this is something that is not going to cost any destination or any uh, tourism player a very large investment in order to do this. It is a very, very simple thing. Almost everything is available already in your premise, a matter of tweaking a little bit. And we have broken down into what is it that we need to have to cater for the Muslims. Uh, we need to have halal food. We need to have, uh, it's nice to, uh, it's good to have uh, Muslim friendly washrooms. It's also good to have non halal activities and then the recreational facilities separated between uh, genders. This will make uh, the, the Muslims more, more comfortable. Uh, giving uh, them also facilities like uh, prayer uh, services uh, available and also Ramadan services available. This you can see for those destinations that has provided this, they make the tourists in their respective destination much, much more comfortable. For example, I think Thailand has taken a good, uh, a good lead in this. Uh, by providing a lot of uh, prayer, comfortable prayer uh, places in their shopping mall. So you can imagine if you are trapped in a shopping mall in a busy, dis busy district, you don't want to come back uh, into your hotel and perform your prayers. And you don't want to go back and look for or eat your own halal food that you have already uh, prepared. So, but you can stay within that complex, continue your shopping on, or whatever you are doing. When the prayer time comes, you can continue with your prayers. And when the time to eat, you will dine if this is abundance uh, in, in that destination. Take a look at what has happened in the recent Olympics. Unfortunately, it has not drawn that much uh, crowd, but the, the, the actual preparation earlier was to make available plenty of halal food uh, in, in Japan or in Tokyo in particular to cater for the Muslims coming. This uh, making them easy. And it was never something that was embraced earlier. And countries like Korea, Taiwan are slowly catching up this momentum. Next. Apart from just uh, leisure business, I believe there are many other opportunities that we can also mm -hmm. explore. Hospital and healthcare facilities in various countries could also have Muslim friendly facilities. Again, Thailand has taken some good lead here by introducing uh, a Muslim friendly uh, hospital facility, drawing a different kind of uh, market segment i.e. the medical uh, tourism market segment. Uh, with the popularity of the uh, Korean soap operas, everybody wants to look good. Everybody wants to be so nice. Uh, many people are following or emulating the uh, Koreans. Cosmetic surgeries are beginning to catch up momentum. But again, don't forget, if this is, people, people will, will, will only get to come to your place if they can be comfortable to know that the product offered is something that is halal, i.e. in the case of cosmetic surgery, is it uh, the, sut the sutures used, are they halal? And if they are not halal, if this is being provided and promoted, I believe this is getting uh, much, much uh, popular. Similarly, the pharmaceutical products, uh, halal gelatin should be used in uh, capsules because this is something that is also uh, a must in, in, uh, in uh, the, the Islamic uh, belief. The wellness and spa is also another popular area. 
that uh, should be using uh, the uh, components or the ingredients used to be halal based. Uh, I mean, places like uh, the Ayurvedic uh, treatment and so forth could be an attraction, uh, even if they are provided in countries which is predominantly not Muslim uh, community. Islamic fashion is another uh, big uh, demand with millennials going through more fashionable and uh, the, the local uh, destination can produce not necessarily a traditional fashion, but maybe a fashion of their local uh, respective destination, which are popular among the youngsters, but tweaking it to the Islamic way of lifestyle. Next is uh, cosmetic. If you look at uh, cosmetics, it's also again extremely popular. But people, the Muslims are beginning to be a bit more concerned on uh, cosmetic products. Just to name a few, some of these are also potential opportunities uh, that, that uh, we, we uh, recommend uh, those destination that wants to uh, bring in a Muslim to provide so that they will have another multiple additional market segment. Next slide. What should be done by the industry or in such a destination? Today, it is not as complex as uh, previously. To get your product known globally, today is no rocket science as such. Uh, previously, traditional marketing uh, method, advertising and so forth, I think has lost its uh, positioning. Uh, they are being replaced heavily by digital marketing. Today, any small thing that is very good, being well promoted through the various uh, uh, digital medias will, will be available and will be uh, knowledgeable by the, the, the uh, community at large. The other thing is how you present those products, in particular, if it is the, the, the ambience, the, the, the food presentation, uh, are they social media worthy? Because if they are social media worthy, these youngsters will be very much uh, influencing their families, friends uh, to, to give it a try, even though those products may not be something that they are familiar with. So industry players, I believe, should capitalize and uh, be a little bit more passionate and be creative on the products uh, that they want to, to offer to create uh, uh, a good demand so that uh, we can, uh, they can get very good reviews uh, which will be the instrument to push the uh, clients to come to your premise. Next slide. I would recommend that uh, a lot of money be put into digital marketing and uh, social media, because this is the area that uh, in the end of the day is being looked at by the target market. Uh, which is uh, even though it is uh, the millennials only comprise about 36 to 40 percent, but they will also influence the families and uh, that will bring uh, the, the, the potential of drawing the, the, the people to, to your destination. So engaging with uh, social media uh, is, is, is definitely a, a plus uh, point so that uh, you will be benefiting. Introducing a change management. Uh, it is important also post uh, pandemic because people want something new. So the, the introduction of uh, technology, uh, is some, some of the places are using robotics. Uh, some of them are mostly or most of them are preferring a contactless uh, situation where technology takes over everything, the lesser contact you have with that establishment or with anybody, uh, it is much preferred in, in this uh, environment. So to invest a little bit money in, in this area would definitely boost up uh, your product. 
and will make your product uh, globally known in a, in a very, very quick uh, time. Next. If you look at that methodology, I think uh, these categories of people exist all of a sudden, you know. You have a large uh, followers on the influencers because they look and they travel destination and uh, they discover places. They make videos of uh, local cuisine like the YouTubers. They go to a place, explore, and they will automatically, because of the way they describe, the way they share the experience, definitely will have a uh, tremendous uh, influence either on accommodation, transportation, local cuisines. Uh, everything is uh, something now that people are looking at this category of people uh, influencing them or drawing their attention to that particular destination or place. So trying to put some allocation to, to woo these people to your destination or invite them to your destination to sample the products would definitely be a major plus point and it will be much, much better outreach uh, to the uh, marketplace. The other thing is, of course, the, the customer uh, experience itself uh, is uh, very, very important in this context because uh, the customer experience will be making a lot of real-time reviews. Because today also one of the factors that people are looking at when before making a decision on holidays or on buying anything in, the, in today's age, uh, the new normal is they look at reviews. So if you have a customer experience, which is good, I think inshallah, you will be able to uh, gain much more customers. Next. The, what, what will benefit that des, the des destination if you offer uh, uh, a Muslim friendly uh, tourism products? definitely will attract more Muslim visitors. As I showed earlier in the slide, that the amount of uh, uh, population, uh, the Muslim population uh, is very large. The following is a good. You will gain automatically a foreign exchange earning, and you will also create opportunities in the tourism industry, downstream activities, uh, from restaurants, uh, transportation, shopping, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and plus, will definitely offer a lot of employment opportunities in that particular area. Next, ladies and gentlemen, not everything is so bad after all. I think the pandemic, COVID nineteen, has somehow promote harmony promote us to live together, although we have to practice uh, social distancing, but that does not mean that we are keeping ourselves far apart. We are still one community. We are still one uh, common, uh, the, the business community are still having a common goal, i.e. to bring people together to promote tourism. And I think a Muslim friendly tourism is definitely a product that will put all of us together and will keep us safe and healthy, inshallah. So I look forward that these recommendations that I mentioned earlier as new opportunities will be seen in more non-Muslim destinations. And hopefully some of those uh, uh, introduction will also benefit your destination and also benefit the Muslims that is patronizing your destination, inshallah. I thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Dr. Ilyas, for the very insightful presentation on opportunities to capture the Muslim tourist market for non-Muslim majority countries and destinations. So with all the products and services in place, how does the tourism industry reaffirm that their respective business is compliant to a Muslim's faith-based needs. 
Is there a reference or a guide that the industry could implement? So our next speaker, Ms. Fakiza Borhan, will brief you about Malaysia's standards on Muslim-friendly hospitality services. A bit on uh, Ms. Fakiza Borhan, she is the Senior Assistant Director in the Standardization Division of the Department of Standards Malaysia. She holds a Bachelor of Science in Biology from the Mara University of Technology. Prior to the Department of Standards becoming a full-fledged national department in 2019, Ms. Fakiza was tasked in monitoring the standardization activities managed by appointed standards development agencies. With more than 10 years experience in Standards Malaysia, she is now the officer in charge of managing standardization activities, specifically for halal and environmental management sectors. This includes developing national and international standards for Muslim-friendly hospitality, as well as promotional programs. So without further ado, I would like to invite Ms. Fakiza Borhan. Okay, um, thank you so much uh, to our handsome guy here, Mr. Fitra. Uh, uh, thank you for introductions. Um, everyone can listen, right? Can. Okay. Okay. Um, <clears throat> uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Yang berbahagia Dr. Dr. Norzari bin Hamad, Sekjen of MOTEC, uh, Director General of ITC, Yang berbahagia Dr. Dr. Razif, um, Honorable guests from respective uh, um, countries, and then distinguished, distinguished speakers, ladies and gentlemen, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, and a very good afternoon. Okay. Um, for First of all, uh, on behalf of Department of Standards Malaysia, I would like to say thank you. Thank you to organizer for inviting Department of Standards Malaysia to give a briefing on MS2610 on Muslim friendly hospitality services. Okay, so um, when we talk about Malaysian standards, uh, it's a national standards, and I think almost um, all countries have your own national standards, which developed by your own national standards body. Okay, so I think in Indonesia you have a BSN. In Malaysia, BSN called as Bank Simpanan National, but in Indonesia you have a Badan Standardisasi Nasional, right? Uh, that develop your own national standard SNE. And uh, Thailand then goes to Thailand. You have a TISI, and then Philippines you have your own. I think BPS that develop stand in your national standards. So in Malaysia, right, Department of Standards in Malaysia is the national standards body, okay? So we develop and promote mission standard and also we manage the participation of uh, our experts in the standard development committees at the international level, right? Other than that, we also play a role as a national accreditation body, okay? Whereby we provide the accreditation services um, to the conformity assessment bodies, such as um, testing and calibration labs, inspection bodies, and certification bodies. We are a, an agency under Ministry of International Trade and Industry, and we are governed by our Act, Standards of Malaysia Act 1996. Okay, so this is the infrastructure on standardization and accreditation uh, in Malaysia. Okay, so actually the structure divided into two, right, uh, by blue dotted line. Okay, so uh, the bottom part is technical level and the upper part is policy level, right? So since these infrastructures cover both role, so I'm not going to touch in detail about the green part, but I will explain on the blue part, okay? Which is more on this standardization, right? So on the blue dotted line, we have national standards committees, okay? We have 25 national standards committees. Uh, actually representing 25 sectors, okay? In other words, we have list out 25 sectors, okay? And then each sector is represented by this National Standards Committee. And under each National Standards Committee, where uh, they have their own technical committee and their own working groups, okay? So this National Standards Committee report to the council, which is National Standards and Accreditation Council, which is uh, established under our act, and play advisory role to our minister, minister meeting, eh, since we are an agency under meeting. 
And our DG is ex official to this council, which report to the SECGEN. So you see the level of the development of standards. We have an NAC, PC, and working group. Okay. Okay, so next. Okay, so this is a statistic, right? Uh, of MS that we have developed as of 31st July 2021. And in total, actually, we have have developed 4,970 Malaysian standards that covers 25 sectors, okay? So this is the list of the sectors that I have mentioned before. Uh, so we coded this NAC based on alphabetical order. We have actually 26 reserve O, okay? So maybe a new sectors, then we can uh, code it uh, uh, O, okay? NAC O. So NAC A, is for agriculture, B chemicals and materials. So I just want to highlight that we have, uh, we have identified halal as a, a sector that needs for standardization activities. So NACI stands for halal. Uh, so so far they have developed thirty four Malaysian standards. So you see the al alignment to international standards. Identicals means that um, you copy the international standards. You just change the cover. <laughs> in a in the simple words, okay, and then in terms of modification, you you get the, the international standards, and then certain clause you need to modify it that they call as a modification MOD. So in terms of halal standards, none. We don't have a, a reference at the international level in terms of um, halal, right? So all are indigenous, okay. So all of them are indigenous thirty four, okay. So. In terms of implementation structure, okay, this is a uh, how MS being implemented in Malaysia. So basically, all Malaysian standards, even other countries, also have this uh, structure. Also, um, all Malaysian standard that we develop through the respective committee uh, is voluntarily used, okay, by industry, business, consumers. It's up to them whether to uh, whether want to comply or not. Okay, however, it can be mandatory. Huh? If let's say a regulator or a few regulators or maybe um, hundreds of regulators, right, um, refer or insert this nation standard into their technical regulations, which is supported by relevant act of parliament. And at this stage, the document step, the standards will become the mandatory. And for non-compliance to that particular standards will be penalty will be imposed, okay? So for example, we have a MS-1. Eh? The first mission standard that we have tablet is on the helmet specification. And currently, this MS-1 has been regulated by two regulators. Eh? We have a Ministry of Domestic Trade and Consumer Affairs, Cabinet HCP, and also uh, Department of Road Transport. So there are two regulators that impose this MS-1. Eh? Uh, into their technical regulations. So the helmet manufacturers need to comply to this MS1, okay? So this is statistics of MS standards eh? uh, as of 31st July, 2021. Eh? So out of 4970 MS that we have developed, 513 has been regulated by 15 regulators, okay? So if you can see in terms of title of committees here, right? Uh, NACI on HALA is none. Huh? There is no HALA standards that has been regulated by the regulators. So all are voluntary. Okay. So it's a we zoom eh, on the MS2610. Eh? So um, in terms of development, sorry, okay. In terms of development, okay, the development of MS2610 has been initiated and started in December 2012. Um, and then um, the deliberation started when we give a funding approval eh, in March 2013. And I think it almost took uh, one year to prepare the draft. And in August, September uh, 2014, uh, we issued the draft for public comments, right? And then uh, we also did a workshop eh, among the tourism stakeholders, right? And then um, after the period of public comment, we review the comments and 
uh, during that time period of time, we received 21 comments and um, we have made an uh, amendment to initial draft and all the amendments is on the editorial part. It's nothing about technical. That's why we proceed with the next stage and, uh, and uh, able to obtain the approval, minister approval in 6 January 2015. So that time we uh, got approval for most team minister because that time you are under Ministry of Science, Technology and Innovation eh, before we transferred to MITI in 2019. Okay. So this is a membership of technical committee on management system for a standard perspective. They are responsible uh, to develop MS2610 that time, okay? With the additional membership, for example, Bumi Putra Travel and Tour Agents Association of Malaysia, uh, IHI, uh, International Hala Integrity Alliance uh, from the university, uh, from the MATA, eh? Malaysia Association of Tour and Travel Agents, Ma Malaysian Association of Hotels, Malaysia Association of Hotel Owners, and then Malaysian Tourist Guides Council, and then representative from MOTEC, Islamic Tourism Center and Tourism Malaysia. So all these actually members of the committee that are responsible to develop this MS to 610 in order to ensure that all the requirements are implementable and global. Okay. So basically the content, the generic content is we have a scope, we have a normative reference, terms and definitions, general requirements, specific requirements, legal requirements, and compliance. Okay. So I'm not going to touch uh, each clause, eh, clause by clause. Okay. I just want to highlight uh, certain uh, clause uh, in these standards. Okay. So in terms of scope, okay, what actually MS2610 covers? Is it overall tourism industry? Uh, so uh, let me read the scope. Eh? Sorry. Okay, this nation standard provides guidelines and requirements for managing tourism facilities, products and services for Muslim travelers in accommodation premises tour packages and tourist guides, full stop, <laughs> okay? And then all requirements in the standards are generic and are intended to be applicable to all organizations and individuals managing Muslim-friendly tourism products and services within the three specified areas stipulated in 1.1, okay? And the last one, under scope, this standard is not applicable eh, for health and beauty facilities such as spa and massage, or any balneotrophy uh, facilities, products, and services, okay? So also we have exclusion here, yeah? So basically the scope only cover this, yeah? accommodation premises, tour packages, and tour guides, okay? Other than that, it's not covered under this scope of MS2610, yeah? So in terms of normative reference, uh, there are two documents, which is MS 1500, which is on halal food, right? Uh, and then the Tourism Industry Act 1992, Act 482, right? So in terms of general requirement, we have a general requirement, we have specific requirement, right? And then we have a legal requirement. So basically, uh, this is items that are included in the general requirements in terms of management responsibility, in terms of policy establishment, uh, in terms of payment of uh, Muslim uh, officers, right? It's all under the cost of management responsibility. Other than that, we have a personnel and responsibility, right? And then we have MFHS, which is Muslim Friendly Hospitality, Hospitality Services Management System Training, eh? the importance of training, okay? And then documentation and storage and the last communication. Eh? If you uh, can see here, is actually the elements of the quality management eh? um, requirements, okay? So that is a general requirement. So we have a specific requirement after that, uh, that covers on the accommodations. Eh? There are five elements that covered under accommodation, which is the requirement for rooms, right? For food and beverages, uh, for public musola, eh? public washroom. And also, uh, the last one is on the, um, what we call, um, uh, 
for accommodation. Eh? Okay, floor. Yes, floor recreational and wellness facilities. So for recreational, recreational, right? Uh, it's covered also in terms of swimming pool, right? And for the wellness uh, facilities, covered on the spa, uh, because um, some of the hotels also have a spa inside their hotel. So there is a requirements uh, stated in this uh, document. Okay. So other than that, we have a specific requirement on tour package. Okay. Of course, in tour package, they touch about the accommodation, right? And then the ground uh, transfers, right? And then in terms of um, tourism uh, package selection, eh? And then uh, in terms of itinerary facility, FMB, and also the um, tourist, uh, tour protection plan, uh, travel protection plan. So there are seven elements covered under tour package. And the last one on the tour guide. So in terms of tour guide, uh, they specify on the credential of the tour guide. And then in terms of uh, code of conduct, okay? Code of conduct, and then the third one in terms of, of course, the important one in terms of appearance eh, of the tour guide, and the last one, uh, touch about the what kind of facilities are uh, Muslim, uh, services, Muslim friendly, uh, services that they need to provide, eh, in order to comply with the standards. Okay, so in terms of legal requirements, it's actually uh, the requirement that cross, um, halal standards. Okay, if you can. Have a look at the halal standards. It's also impose the same requirements on the legal requirements. All products and services shall, in other aspect, comply with the legislation, including relevant requirements currently in force in Malaysia. For example, if your premise need to be registered with the local authority, then you have to register. Okay, is a, a requirement under this document under under this uh, clause. Okay. Uh, if you, as a tour guide, you need to register with the authority, relevant authority, then you need to register. You have to register. Okay. So all uh, the, the requirements actually imposed under these legal requirements. Okay. So MS 2610 developed in 2015. Now is 2021. Is it is it the requirements still remain valid? Okay. That's why the committee has reviewed the content of the MS2610 and decide uh, to revise this MS2610. Uh, so now this MS2610 2015 is currently under revision. Okay, so that is about MS2610. Okay, so I would like to draw your attention about the standardization activities related to the Muslim friendly um, standards eh, at the international. Eh? So basically, this is actually the platform or fora about standardization activities. You know, SMIC, ISO, and IC is actually the platform to develop standards. The rest, we have a four. The other four um, platforms, we have APEC SCSC, and then we have uh, SCCSQ, we have uh, PASC, we have WTO activity. It's more on the platform to discuss on these standardization issues. Right, so for the ISO and IC, the difference, uh, the, the, the memberships, any country can be a member, while SMIC, uh, the member is only from the Islamic countries. Okay, however, uh, non Muslim countries can also. Okay, there seems to be uh, technical difficulties on the uh, on 
this Fakiza side. Uh, we're trying to get it back in. Uh, bear with bear with us, please, uh, for a few minutes. We're trying to get Miss Fakiza back in. Uh, while we await Ms. Fakiza, perhaps we can uh, carry on with uh, the presentation from Sunway. Uh, Silas. Okay, Mr. Fitcher. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now proceed to our next speaker, the final one for the day, uh, who will share on Sunway Hotel Group's experience in Muslim-friendly tourism and hospitality and the industry's perspective of the concept. He is one of the most iconic and best known personalities in the ASEAN and Middle East tourism and hospitality scene, Mr. Ahmad Faisal Iskandar. He has over 25 years of experience in the industry and has been based in Malaysia, Vietnam and the United Arab Emirates. He is responsible for international arrivals to Sunway Kuala Lumpur hotels, namely those from the ASEAN, Middle East, North Africa and CIS regions as well as overseeing other nearby geographical areas such as India, China, Hong Kong, and Taiwan. Mr. Ahmad Faisal's specialties include initiating international contracts, preparing sales action plans and schedules, developing and maintaining sales and promotional materials, developing and conducting presentations of company products, servicing current and potential clients, and monitoring competitors, market conditions, and product development. Many in the industry, have stated that he is the reason behind many smiles of travel freaks and family togetherness. Therefore, without much further ado, we would like to invite Mr. Ahmad Faisal to present his speech. Mr. Ahmad Faisal, kindly unmute yourself.
Can you unmute? Mute. Okay, I'm I'm muted now. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Can you okay, see? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, uh, greetings uh, to all. Uh, Sawadikap to our friends from Thailand. Selamat siang. And for Malaysian, uh, good afternoon. <laughs> okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you. Uh, sorry for the um, uh, uh, a bit of technical just now. Uh, um, firstly, I would like to say thank you to IM uh, ITC to invite me for this forum or this webinar today uh, on the understanding Muslim friendly tourism on our story, Sunway story. And to all the invited uh, speakers and all industry players, thank you for making the time to be with us today for this presentation of uh, our personal, our experience in uh, handling uh, Muslim market. Uh, first and foremost, before we go to the first slide, I just like to say that Sunway is one of the uh, destinations that highly sought by the Middle Eastern market, North Africa, Central Asia, and also from other sectors as well. Uh, due to uh, some of the uh, practice and principle that we have done, we have already in our operation for so many years, which I will disclose in the presentation. So I hope everybody uh, uh, well, you know, yeah, so hopefully I can start the presentation now. So can we go to the next slide, please? Okay, uh, just a bit of fun, uh, some idea about Sunway. Maybe some of you have heard about Sunway. Some of you may not. Some of you have even stayed here before. And also uh, some of you have come and shopped here before. So basically, Sunway is in Petaling Jaya district. This is one of the district in uh, Malaysia, in Selangor state. Within, we are in a 800 hectare of land, which comprise not only leisure, which is the the what they call it. it's a city by itself in general it's not only the theme park the shopping mall and the hotels it's also have uh, we also have sunway university sunway educations uh, sunway home so we have uh, our in within the 800 uh, hectares of land we do have a lot of uh, others uh, businesses uh, others uh, activity that within that period of uh, area uh, so Sunway Clio, we have over actual, we are in the midst of doing our renovation and upgrades transformation. So which is happening currently at Sunway Resort Hotel and Spa, our five-star hotel. The good news is in, in the near future, within five, or five months, we will have uh, our Gordon Ramsay restaurants, which uh, a lot of people don't have in the Southeast Asia. They don't have to fly all over to London, Mayfair, to enjoy uh, uh, Gordon Ramsay. Uh, cuisines uh, spent in pound and have to request for uh, visa also ever. So it will be in Sunway itself. So people from Southeast Asia, from ASEAN, they will have a, you know, they will have uh, experienced this uh, kind of uh, culinary best in Malaysia, uh, in Sunway. Okay, we have 1,400 rooms altogether. Okay, we have Sunway Lagoon. We have six uh, world-renowned and award-winning uh, theme park. And we have our shopping mall, Sunway Street Pyramid Commission Center, as one of the commission in Kuala Lumpur that quite uh, very famous for its uh, mice activity. And Sunway Pyramid Mall, which have about 900 shops, over 900 shops and about 250 FMB outlets. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, as what been mentioned by my fellow panelists just now, uh, look into the market. Global Islamic tourism potential, there are about 1.8 billion uh, Muslim to 2 billion Muslim population globally all over the world. I would like to take your attention into the positive uh, number of uh, contribution in terms of uh, in 2019, there is 194 billion uh, uh, worth of business uh, coming from this market segment. And if not because of COVID-19 endemic uh, presently, they are expected forecast total is going to be 270, uh, 274 billion uh, expected global Muslim expenditure in 2024. As what mentioned by my fellow colleague just now, uh, Yang Bapak Gedato, said that uh, it will come, it will come to this. I mean, but just because of the endemic, it might go a bit further than that because everybody now has been confined for about one and a half years. So I believe that the demand is still there 
uh, but it will gradually go to these numbers. So uh, I believe that in terms of market uh, development, uh, global or Islamic tourism is one of the important segment that you know uh, the, the the tourism uh, should uh, people that handle tourism or in the tourism industry should really look at it very seriously. Next slide. Okay, uh, this is my, uh, I just opened to you, uh, showcase to you what is the, this is just only Middle East, Middle East and North Africa productivity from 2017 to 220. Actually, we have much more better than this, uh, uh, but this is due to post-2016, there is a lot of um, uh, secondary or new emerging market, the likes of, um, I mean, they go also to Armenia, Azerbaijan, uh, these countries, which is just opening their market, and uh, this market is also halal uh, in their offering to the Middle East, North Africa, uh, tourism or tourists to their country. So as you can see from 2017 in the in the chart that uh, this is uh, the numbers is from 21 million, 23 million. This is our revenue in terms of comprise uh, arrival or revenue that we gotten from just Middle East and North Africa. This is not yet uh, Middle uh, Islamic or Muslim travel that from other segment uh, that we have, you know, from Southeast Asia, just for Middle East only, just to give you an example. Uh, that the, the potential of the, the, this uh, Muslim uh, uh, tourism. Uh, this is from all ever market, uh, from the travel agent, from online travel agent, from collaboration with uh, corporate in the Middle East uh, to uh, Sunway Resort. Yeah. Next slide, please. Okay. Uh, so, the environment on the Sunway story is uh, Sunway, as I mentioned, is a Sunway city. It's not only with hotels, shopping mall, theme park. It also have hospital. We also have university. It all it also have others uh, 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 township. You know to support uh, the the business to to the Sunway uh, city uh, facilities. And as you can see that you know this is something that uh, incorporate. And we always emphasize that anything and everything is within walking distance uh, to uh, when you stay in Sunway. And uh, this is uh, the facility, all the facility that we have are Muslim friendly uh, to, be, uh, to make sure that you know, it really will be much more uh, familiar for those uh, tourists. You know, we have a lot, all of our facility uh, equipped with more uh, small uh, surau, you know, uh, small surau. And then we have, uh, uh, of course, Sumasura also known as prayer room. We have a bidet inside our washroom. We have the signage to the mosque or to the surau whenever they came in any of our facilities. So um, uh, the students, the people who went to the hospitals, went to the theme park, the shopping mall, to the hotels have really, really convenient access to all the facility uh, to the Muslim travelers. Okay, next slide. Okay, uh, this is a picture of our Surah facility in uh, Sunway Main Hotels uh, at other destination, uh, or oh, sorry, at other, let me rephrase that, at other facilities also they have their respective uh, Surah to support uh, the Muslim travelers whenever they, they went to the facilities or to the, went to the venue. Uh, let's say they go to the shopping mall, there will be Surah at each of our, uh, sorry, at two floor, there is one Surah uh, to accommodate the Muslim uh, to shoppers. You know, tra travelers at our hotels, uh, main hotel, they have one surau, and then at Cleo, they've got one other one surau. So, uh, this is something surau is a place, a place of prayer. So, this is uh, the, the, the facility that, that uh, we always emphasize and we always take care of the cleanliness. We're always taking care of the, the, the you know, the, the, the facility that we equip inside there, the Holy Quran, the, 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 play, the prayer mat, you know, we make sure that it is uh, always in the in the best and clean condition uh, that we can offer. We did not, we make sure that all these are something that, you know, they were comfortable with conveniently whenever they stay with us. Even in the room, uh, because of not all of our uh, tourists or our guests that stay in the room are all Muslim, uh, the, if they, they wish to pray inside their room on their own, 
they can always request for uh, the prayer mat uh, to the room. So our front office housekeeping and housekeeping will send it to them yeah, without any other cost. There is no cost of, of, about it. And then uh, we have halal restaurant, uh, certified halal restaurant. Uh, that is the most important thing when you cater for uh, Muslim travel. Because believe it or not, from my past experience, some of the people that I meet uh, in uh, some of the regional area, they will ask me if you know, they, I can guide them to other uh, destination in Malaysia, which is also halal. This, this is why I, I, say, uh, I would like to share uh, uh, that the, the certification, uh, acknowledgement, uh, members of Muslim travel is very important to any of the travel operator, the hotels that are looking into to capture max, uh, Muslim travelers uh, to their hotels and their facilities. Because believe or not, there are some of the travelers they will Google in their internet they will find out from the online channel that uh, which hotel are certified halal or if better, they, they got some recognition of halal uh, product or halal facility in their, in their hotels and establishment. So we will go to the next slide. Next slide, please. Next slide. Uh, this is our basic rooms and facility. Next slide, please. Ah, this is what I would like to share with all of you, um, the importance of having uh, recognition. So by, being, uh, by having this, it will really help to further expose your hotels for the Muslim traveler that's looking into this sort of recognition. Sunway has ever been one of the best or one of the highly sought um, uh, hotel for Middle Eastern, North Africa, Muslim uh, travelers uh, due to its uh, before even uh, we have the recognition from um, Muslim friendly recognition recognition we uh, MFAR in short we always make sure that uh, we are taking care of the facilities uh, offered to our Muslim traveler halal food is number one when I am doing my presentation overseas the first thing I would to, to make sure that I convey the message to all my partners and friends, uh, potential guests and partners is Sunway prepare halal food. We have mosque, uh, we near to the mosque. We, are, uh, we have surau in our facility. And uh, believe it or not, one of the most importing, uh, important uh, item that you need to have inside your rooms, uh, hotels is a bidet. Just now also, uh, Dato that mentioned about that facility, the name of the, pro, uh, the facility is Bidet. Bidet is uh, something that common in Middle East and easy for them to clean, uh, for them to do uh, their clean. Yeah? So this is something that I would like to share with all the partners, uh, potential hotels that are going to uh, do, uh, to handle or uh, interested uh, to take care of Muslim travel is to make sure that they have a bidet in their room because why it really will make a difference from hotel that without a bidet. Okay, so um, another most important thing is get a recognition. This is why I believe that before we have uh, MFAR recognition, uh, we have this much of business, but uh, once we have MFAR business uh, recognition, I believe that we can drive more business to Sunway Hotel and Resort. Not only in uh, uh, not only from the traditional market, but also for the new market. Uh, according to uh, one of the uh, feedback that I got, especially from Europe, a lot of European Muslim, whenever they they do their, I mean, they plan their travel. One of the key things that they will check is whether the hotel serve halal and also recognized by uh, respective uh, authority of the respective country, whether they are halal recognized or not. So this is something that very huge and potential for the hotels uh, in Indonesia, Malaysia, and Thailand. If you really look into um, getting or uh, uh, initiating more Muslim uh, to stay in your property, your facility, uh, to, to prepare halal food, to have surau, uh, bidet, and to be recognized is very, very, uh, very uh, highly uh, advised to, to, uh, to have all of this uh, prepared. And before they, you know, you can really drive the numbers and arrival from all these uh, Muslim uh, travelers uh, from the Muslim countries. So um, 
this is, uh, I believe, the end of my presentation. Uh, my presentation is so short. So, uh, terima kasih. And uh, if there is any question, please uh, share it inside the, the note or the, uh, the note point or note box so we can answer you accordingly. Because I'm an operational person. I'm not, uh, I'm not uh, uh, from the academic, so I'm very straightforward. So I have been, as mentioned by uh, the, uh, my friend just now, I was in the business tourism uh, on the ground for 25, 26 years old, 26 years. I have walked to most of the countries uh, in North Africa, to Europe, uh, Middle East, Central Asia. So I am more, if best for me, uh, I would, uh, if people ask me questions so I can answer. So that is uh, for me based on life experience, uh, how to cater, how handle, to handle, how, what is the feedback, what is the common understand of uh, people uh, from respective ge geographical areas. So uh, again, uh, you have any question uh, on sales and marketing, how to do sales in North Africa, Europe, uh, Middle East, Central Asia, in terms of uh, to get the attention from the local market, the lo local source market to your uh, respective um, hotels in respective countries, you know, just drop me a note. I would glad to share with you my experience, uh, what I have gone uh, to, to do and to drive the business. And ladies and gentlemen, again, uh, I always advise this to my uh, colleague and to my friends in the industry say that uh, why, why you want to limit yourself into certain uh, market? Why not you open your facility uh, offers to also cover all? Because some of the hotels, they do not have halal certification, they do not halal restaurant. So this uh, by, by default will limit your, your client uh, channel to your hotels. So just offer them halal food, you know, just inform that you are following the strict, I mean, the guideline from the halal directive, uh, how to serve, how to, you know, give the services to the rooms. I mean, it will help you to open the, the gate, I mean, to the flat gate from the market that is, I think that we really, really, they, they can help you in your hotel development and your revenue generation. So thank you so much uh, to ITC and to all of you. So I, re I pass back to Enche uh, Fitra. All right. So thank, follow up. thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Um, Faisal. Yeah. Uh, we would like to continue uh, Ms. Fakiza's presentation. She has a little bit more to talk about. So Ms. Fakiza, if you please. Okay. Uh, thank you. Sorry, everyone, because I accidentally uh, disconnected. Okay, back to this slide, right? Um, the difference between SMIC ISO is that um, there is um, in terms of membership one, and then in terms of score standardization is quite similar. But the unique and the special about SMIC is that SMIC create a platform for harmonization of halal standards, right? That's why in 2014, Malaysia decided okay, to be a member of SMIC. Okay, and I think it's also draw attention of Indonesia to becoming a member of the SMIC, right? So this is the list. Since SMIC is quite new compared to the ISO and also IC, right? So currently they have uh, established 17. I'm not uh, updated this list. Um, actually, they have a 17, the latest one on handicraft, right? So um as a member of SMIC, you can be a P participating member or member, observing member or non-member, okay? So, however, if you are non-YC members, you only have a, a choice either to be O member and non-member, okay? So, the difference between O and P member, P member have a voting rights while O member don't have a voting rights. But you still can pass, um, participate in the meetings, comments on the draft and so on and so forth. So, um, I would like to highlight here, okay, at the SMIC level, right, they have established TC5 on tourism and related services, whereby Malaysia is a P member, and uh, we have established the National Medical Committee, this is which is WG on hospitality services, okay, which is currently chaired by the Director General of Islamic Tourism Center. And then this WG 
is actually representing Malaysia, right, to review and make a comment on the draft that uh, developed under the TC5. Okay, so TC5, tourism and related services, nothing to do with halal in terms of title. However, in terms of projects, yes, they are work on the halal tourism standards. Okay, that's why we have made a decision to be a P member to this TC5. Okay, so back to the TC5. Okay, TC5 has published a standards OIC SMIC 9 2019 on halal tourism services general requirements. Okay, so uh, during the development, of course, the, the two six time have met as a reference during the development of this OIC SMIC 9. And then um, if you make a comparison between the MS 2610 and OIC SMIC 9, almost all the requirements of 2610 has been integrated in this OIC SMIC 9. However, there are additional requirements that put has been um, uh, put eh, um, under this OIC SMIC 9, right? So if you refer to the scope of these um, standards, right, OIC SMIC 9, it's actually similar to MS2610, okay? If I read through this, this standard provides guidelines and requirements for managing halal tourism facilities, products and services for travelers in accommodation premises, tour packages, tourist guides for MS2610 full stop, right? For But for this OIC SMIC 9, continue eh? and other tourist services. So this OIC SMIC 9 is more comprehensive, Compared to the uh, MS2610. And they have a um, put note there tourist services include spa, hammams, and medical services. Okay, so um, 1.2 all requirements in these standards are generic and intended to be applicable to all organizations and individuals managing halal tourism products and services within the specified areas stipulated in clause 1.1. So uh, in Malaysia, we have received requests from the spa associations, hospitals, from the airport itself to have their own Muslim-friendly requirements, right? So I think uh, that is why the, the committee decided eh, for this document be main reference for the revision of MS2610, okay? However, we are not decided yet whether we are adopting the standards, either modifically modified or identically adopted, uh, because we still subject for the stakeholders engagement with, which will be conducted soon, right? Um, and then uh, in terms of revision of MS2610 uh, is expected to be completed in 2022, uh, inshallah. So that's all updates and about uh, information about 2610. So, Thank you. That's all. Back to Mr. Fitra. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Fakiza. So we will now begin the Q&A session. Uh, Mr. Silas, would you take over? Okay. Thanks, Mr. Fitra. So everyone, uh, we will now proceed to the Q&A session. Uh, Firstly, also thanks to Madam Fakiza for her insights on uh, NSCI Halal Malaysian Standards, MS2610, and also Malaysia in SMIC. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, before we proceed to the Q&A session, uh, allow me to remind our audience again that if you have any questions for our speakers, you may leave them in the chat box, or you can also raise your hand via the reaction button below. So we got our first question in for Mr. Ahmad Faisal. The first question from... First oh, question no, no. from Ms. No Amira. Based on the implementation of Muslim Friendly in Sunway Hotels, do you think it helps in sustainability of the hotel business? Over to you, Mr. Ahmad Faisal. Uh, please uh, unmute. Okay, sorry. Uh, sorry, can I hear the question again, Mr. Silas? Uh, Silas? Okay, no problem. So question for Mr. Ahmad Faisal. Uh, do you think the implementation of Muslim Friendly in Sunway Hotels so far uh, helps in sustainability of hotel business? 
Okay, thank you. Thank you. Very good question. Yes, yes. The When we have our uh, um, recognition, when we do have a, a halal kitchen to facilitate our Muslim guests, it really helps a lot. As what my fellow panel mentioned just now, you know, in Middle East, we call it the word of mouth marketing. Uh, word of mouth marketing is where your friends, your family, your neighbor, your sister and brother come for a holiday, family holiday or honeymoon. Because Arabs, uh, our Middle East, North Africa, they always have a family gathering, uh, maybe once a month or something. They will ask each other. They will ask each other such as, hey, where do you go for your honeymoon? How is your honeymoon? How is your holiday with your family? So when they come back and they so uh, happy, they are so, um, uh, what they call this, um, having a very good time while staying uh, with that uh, for Sunway in this case, they will tell their family, hey guys, you need to go back to, I mean, if you ever go to Malaysia for family holiday, honeymoons, you know, uh, why not stay in this particular hotel? Because the food is halal. Uh, you can easily pray, you know, uh, whether you pray in your room, uh, it's very clean, you know, and then also, uh, either you go for the shopping mall, you can also pray in your, uh, in the shopping mall, the facilities that we have there, even if they come for education, uh, they come for, uh, they went for what they call this uh, medical uh, uh, tourism, you know, for, uh, to, to, to help or to, to facilitate or to what. So basically the facility that we have, the, 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 um, the halal food is very important one. And then the recognition with now we have the MFAR recognition. It really will, really will help us further, you know, because previously we just use our uh, convincing power when we talk to them, hey, the Sunway has been in from 1996 and we have been servicing uh, Middle East customer for so many years and everybody recognizes even though without the, rec the recognition. But to answer in very simple manners, if any hotels would take that time or plunge to, you know, readily uh, announce to the world they are halal, they have recognition from MFAR, ITC, this is something really will, will, will facilitate the numbers of Muslim travelers to your respective uh, hotels and uh, uh, restaurants. Yeah. Yep. yeah, that's all. Thank you, Mr. Ahmad Faisal. Yes. Now, we have another question. This is mm. uh, more for Madam Fahiza, mm. from Mr. Rahman Priyat Mukko, where can we access these standard documents? Okay. Uh, for Malaysian Standard, MS-260, you can uh, purchase it through our website, www.jsm.gov.my. While for YC SMIC Standard, YC SMIC 9, you can uh, purchase it through their website, um, smic.org smic.org okay thank you madam fahiza uh, there's another question for you this is from supatra division why malaysia needs to have muslim certifications since malaysia is a muslim country i would have thought that everything is already muslim friendly i see the need of thailand to have certifications to declare muslim friendly <laughs> for me to answer okay even if we are a muslim country but populations i think um, not more than 60 percent is muslim okay the rest indian chinese right certification especially when the industry is actually running by this non-muslim in order to give a confidence eh, and uh, and um, to convince the muslim that the products that services they provided this by this non-muslim uh, is actually can be used by this muslim um, uh, consumers okay that's why there's a need for that halal certification and uh, if we can take a look for the transition period right uh, if um, for the halal food, for example, halal food standards, uh, which based on the which is halal food certification standard, which is based on the MS 500, MS 500, the first publication is in 2000, and then revised in 2004, 2009, and 2019, right? And uh, throughout this evolution of this nation standards, there is additional requirements 
because halal uh, certifications become matured and the industry, even non-Muslim, um, can comply requirements. Okay, so and then uh, if you refer to the halal certification uh, statistics, is actually the growth of halal certification is increasingly, uh, increasingly uh, and rapidly growth. Uh, it's not just in Malaysia, but also in other countries. You can ask in Indonesia why Indonesia also provide the halal certification, even recognition of the um, other halal certification, right? So it's not just uh, Malaysia, even other uh, Muslim countries, especially in the Middle East, also have the halal certifications. Uh, that's why, because they, they want to have a, a confidence when they're using the, especially when they use or consume a product that is from the uh, non-Muslim, they produced by non-Muslim. Uh, that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Fahiza. Maybe we will also like to hit the same question to Dr. Hafiz. Why yeah. does Malaysia need to have Muslim yeah. certifications? Yeah, the same question. Is yeah, I, I intend to answer that particular question, actually. Well, um, thank you for that question. I mean, again, yeah, there are concerns. Why? Why? Why do we need to certify everything? But again, we need to understand that um, uh, the issue of trustworthiness. Yeah? Uh, it is important for tourism provider to instill trustworthiness to their customers, in which in this particular matter, the tourists. Uh, the, the Muslim community or the Muslim market is actually quite special yeah, because they uh, practices there are certain practices that they need to do every day and there are certain regulations that they have to adhere during in their daily life and while traveling they insist to practice such faith-based uh, activities so uh, if you ask me personally i mean uh, it is actually the utmost important for non-muslim destination who plan to acquire this Muslim market to reflect the trustworthiness. Uh, the trustworthiness in terms of that when the travelers travel to this destination, they are able to practice their faith. So uh, certification is one of the way to increase or to enhance the trust of that particular market to that particular destinations. Yeah. Uh, and talking about the economic impact of uh, uh, certification, we need to understand the concept of import and export in tourism uh, activities and tourism business. Previously, uh, the, the conventional way is, way is where the destination invite uh, investors uh, to open up or to offer Muslim services. Yeah, And perhaps it is... Uh, not economical because uh, even though the tourists come to that particular destination they spend money but the money goes back to the muslim countries so by having this uh, certification it also enhance the supply of <clears throat> muslim based uh, products food products definitely in that particular destination in which it also enhance the growth of uh, muslim products and uh, produces uh, in non-Muslim destinations. So again, uh, the certifications is vital to instill trustworthiness, to uh, enhance the demand. And when trust is there, therefore there is an increase in demand. At the end of the day, uh, certification of halal is actually quite similar with the, com com the, the conventional a certification in which they only instill the Sharia part, the Sharia part as one of the pillars in the certification. So again, there are also other countries who promotes uh, halal or Muslim friendly certifications as family friendly products for non-Muslim tourists or non-Muslim markets. So uh, I, I mean, if you ask me personally, uh, Malaysia. Indonesia, as the major, as, uh, who have majority, who their population are majority based on uh, Muslim populations, also have their own certification. So it's actually a reflection of how important are uh, certifications uh, for non-Muslim tourism destination if they aim to gather or to get 
uh, to 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 sub, to target uh, Muslim tourism market. Uh, that's from me. Thank you, Dr. Hafiz. Uh, this, there's one more question here, which is more on your scope of work as well. This is from Asra from Ali Klas Taliwang Boarding School. What should we do as the organizer of education institutes in university or boarding schools about halal tourism? Oh, yeah. <laughs> now we are talking about boarding schools. Yeah. I mean, uh, perhaps what I can say right now, when there is a demand, there, there, there must be a supply. Yep. As right now, uh, many uh, companies, many tourism businesses are trying to offer um, Muslim-friendly tourism or halal tourism or Islamic tourism, not only in Malaysia, but also elsewhere. There is a high demand for personnel who have knowledge and also expertise in halal tourism market. Second is on the certifications. Yeah. So uh, right now in Malaysia, uh, I, I'm happy to share that we have a specific uh, undergraduate program focusing on uh, Islamic tourism uh, approved by the Ministry of Edu uh, Higher Education of Malaysia to UNIZA, UNIZA Terengganu, to come up with their own uh, halal tourism program. Uh, undoubtedly, uh, many other uh, universities program have included halal tourism, Islamic tourism, as part of their syllabus or subjects. Yeah? Because the reason why uh, this curriculum was designed based on the inputs from the uh, operators, the practitioners. And uh, for the past few years, they have keep on asking us, uh, the educators, uh, the, uh, the curriculum designer, to include or to instill this uh, Islamic tourism, halal tourism practices, uh, halal tourism certifications, uh, procedures in our syllabus. Uh, again, I think um, uh, for for higher education, yeah, for higher education, we don't have any problem. But for primary and secondary education, yeah, uh, yeah, I think uh, awareness is very important. This is where. Uh, you could play your role in uh, putting putting up front the awareness about halal tourism, the importance of halal tourism, what's so different between halal and conventional, how we can play around and make use of this concept. Yeah, and perhaps we need to understand that halal tourism, uh, Islamic tourism is a marketing concept. It's a marketing concept. So uh, the reason why this concept was developed because there is an opportunity for marketers to use this market to enhance the profitability of that particular organization or to enhance the economic impact towards particular destination. So uh, as the Muslim population is growing, the demand for Muslim-based products will be growing also. So uh, it's up to you whether you want to prepare yourself or not. If um, what I can say is that if a destination who, who want to focus on Muslim decision, but doesn't have any resource to support in terms of human resource, they will be importing those uh, workforce from other countries in which that will be some sort like a waste uh, of economic, uh, uh, or say we call is a outliers eh, that we should, we should avoid. Uh, thus, I urge uh, any policy makers to ensure that by developing your policies, coming up with your marketing plan, targeting certain targets, please include uh, the, 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 the supply of workforce, the supply of uh, intelligence eh, uh, within the scope of that particular product, which is currently we're talking about Islamic tourism, in your plan. Therefore, as the demand is getting higher and higher, uh, the supply of workforce who are able to cater for this market demand is there and, uh, and, and ready to use. So that is my concern. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hafiz. Now there's uh, another question here. We, we will hit this more for Dato Ilyas. Uh, so Dato Ilyas, what are the general obstacles that destinations face in branding themselves Muslim friendly and how can they be overcome? Over to you, Dr. Ilyas. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the question. I think uh, challenges always uh, are there in the any 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 new product that uh, we try to put forward. 
But I think uh, to mitigate that, uh, I think uh, one of the the one of the reasons people shy away, uh, we cannot make it too uh, tight in terms of uh, the regulation. Uh, that's why we use the term friendly. This is a big, a big difference between the, the context of halal. Halal has got a very, very strict compliance, which uh, has got uh, Sharia connotation and whatnot uh, to be applicable. So uh, I think the the... In, in my personal opinion, in the practices that I have, I have uh, applied, uh, it is a reluctance of trying to venture. Uh, once you put your foot in, believe me, you will not find the challenge, but you will get the reward uh, instead. So I would request those who are keen to play this uh, game, i.e. to allow more uh, uh, Muslim uh, to your destination, to just go for it, go for it. And I think the rest will come in place. You can start with the most minimum uh, applications or, or facilities and products, and then subsequently can grow. Uh, believe me, I have got some uh, uh, reasonable experience traveling where uh, I, I faced with some difficulties. When I, I first traveled to Korea, if I can share, uh, way back, you know, about five years ago, uh, there were very, very few uh, halal restaurants. And if there are halal restaurants, they do not serve the local ethnic food. They serve the Indian food or the Arabic food. Why must I go to destination or in Korea and eat an Indian food or an Arabic food. I want to try the local cuisine, but probably because the, the local providers don't feel or they are asking the same question, the challenges, the obstacle, because they don't know. I think here is education. If we educate them well, prepare them well, don't, don't scare them so much that uh, Muslim friendly does not mean the end of the world, that like you have to convert yourself to Muslim and so forth. Just like when I give a lot of talks, I said, if you eat halal food, the last one I had in Philippines, when the mayor come up and agree with me, I said, if you eat halal food, does not make you a Muslim yet. So please, by all means, you know, uh, and then the mayor agreed that, you know, he, he even looks good, he said, by eating Muslim food. So uh, let's, uh, let's refocus. Uh, look at the simplicity of it. Uh, in, 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 real, in real terms, Islam is not a difficult uh, religion. It's a very simple religion, but sometimes the perception of the public and then what we make it out to be makes it difficult. I hope that clears uh, some of the uh, uh, skepticism about moving into that. that I, I would say there's no big challenge as much as you want to put your foot in, go for it. All right, thank you, Dr. Elias. Um, Due to time constraints, so we are unable to answer all the questions. But if you have any, if you want to ask more uh, to our speakers, you can send an email to id at itc.gov.my, which is um, which Silas will be typing in the chat box. But I would like to answer one question right here from Ain Jamalia Muhammad Zain. She's asking, what is the cost involved to get M4 recognition? Uh, the uh, currently the M4 recognition is. Uh, on a complementary basis, but you have to follow certain criteria. However, starting from 2022, you have to pay an uh, administration fee of 500 ringgit for first-time applicants. And for renewal uh, of the MFAR recognition, hotels have to pay 250 ringgit for uh, admission uh, administration fee. There's another question here from Farid Abdurrahman. What is the difference between M4 recognition and Salam standard certification? Salam standard certification is uh, was developed by Tripfest by uh, Faiz Fadila, and the difference is that Salam standards they do their uh, auditing or uh, by uh, email only. That means they do not go physically to inspect the hotel. Uh, they just do it by email. They uh, show some pictures and then they. Uh, provide certification. But for MFAR, we actually go to the hotels and we conduct um, 
physical inspections to see uh, whether or not the hotels meet the requirements for MFAR. Okay, so that's all for the Q&A session. Again, if you have any more questions, please send your uh, an email to id at itc.gov.my and we will forward the questions to the respective speakers. So before we proceed with the uh, quiz session, I would like to invite ITC Director General, Dr. Dr. Mohamed Razib, to give a few words. Uh, Dato? Okay. Can you hear me, uh, Fitra? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And uh, my dear and friendly speakers and also participants, I would like to acknowledge the uh, Professor uh, Dr. Hafiz from UITM, uh, Dato' Ilyas, uh, Puan uh, Pakiza, and also Mr. Uh, Faisal, and uh, not to forget also our partner for today's uh, webinar is from IMTGT Secretariat, uh, many of them, and uh, I would like also to acknowledge uh, the presence of our board member, Tuan Haji Khairan. Uh, thank you for the support that you have given us all this while, and also to all other participants of this webinar, I meant to understand that uh, uh, at the beginning of the session, we are more than 300 and Alhamdulillah, thank you for your passion uh, because you stay put with us. Uh, and also uh, very encouragingly that uh, we have uh, not only from Indonesia, uh, but from Thailand, of course, from Malaysia, uh, and also from Philippines and Cambodia, uh, as far as from uh, Spain and New Zealand and Brazil. Thank you so much, thank you for so much. Because as mentioned by one of the speakers, no other than uh, better days, but today is the best day and better days are coming. Um, I really hope that um, the session has have give, you, have give you the uh, very uh, insightful uh, and important a message and knowledge very significant uh, to your operation and to what you are doing now um, because it is uh, it is designed as such uh, to give you a broader picture about the some of the critical areas uh, involved in developing and also promoting uh, Muslim friendly tourism and hospitality uh, you, you realize that uh, the session covers uh, the scenario analysis, uh, market uh, demand and supply, uh, and potential uh, towards a social economy and requirement for standard and governance. And also one of the case studies uh, done by uh, one of our supply chain uh, from the Sunway, uh, give you very, very uh, uh, important insights and also important ingredients uh, for you to uh, develop uh, more about the Muslim friendly uh, tourism and also hospitality. Because the understanding of this uh, Muslim friendly and tourism we call, uh, hospitality ecosystem and principles uh, are very important because it will help you uh, in designing and also in uh, developing the infrastructure the contents and also the products and uh, packaging as well as uh, for standard and more importantly uh, to attract and facilitate uh, to the university for the uh, uh, curriculum design as mentioned one by Dr. Hafiz just now. So um, if I were to put in, uh, in perspective uh, when we want to have this uh, Muslim friendly uh, tourism and hospitality, uh, you need to have, uh, uh, whether you like it or not, uh, because this is what our experience in ITC, 
uh, you need to have uh, strategic and apply research because Muslim friendly tourism is a new uh, segment, but the potential is great mentioned by uh, one of our speakers just now. Uh, we have a population of 1.8, even now they have grown to 1.9 billion Muslim population. And across the board in uh, Southeast Asia, we have more than 250 million. And uh, in, not only in the Muslim country, but also in the Muslim country, you can see the presence of big population of Muslim. And they are now traveling in style, and they demand for good product. After all, after uh, during the pandemic, you can see new behavior has been developed. Uh, they look for security, safety, and they want to be assured uh, about the quality of a product or services. Therefore, certification is required. Just put it well in simple term, you can claim you have, you have this, you have that, but you need someone to certify you. Just mention if you go to, to any university, you go to any school, uh, they will, they will ask you where is the certificate from that school and university. So there is a very, very extreme example I want to put forward. Another thing that is also important to have uh, a capacity building and uh, you need to have uh, data, uh, big data, and then you have to embrace this uh, utilization. Uh, I mentioned one of the, by the speaker general, how you market your products. And uh, on top of that, you need very, very good uh, brand. And uh, inshallah, this uh, Muslim friendly tourism and hospitality will be the brand that uh, most people around the world are looking for. Because uh, it's only not cover Muslim, but also uh, the buy-in uh, also found from the, the Muslim uh, community. Because uh, uh, you mentioned the word halal, Obviously, uh, the quality is always the most important part uh, or the ingredient uh, they are talking about. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, once again, uh, thank you for your participation, for your commitment. And this is what uh, ITC would like to, to do in coming days and coming months uh, to share with you what we have uh, with us uh, from our research and we'll be uh, offering and we'll uh, uh, put forward uh, uh, later on uh, our activities so that you can benefit, so that you can have a better understanding about the, the new segment, Muslim friendly tourism and hospitality. So once again, uh, stay safe. Uh, let's us pray together that uh, the pandemic will be over and then we'll come back uh, to what we've been doing before, but of course, with further improvement. Thank you so much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Walaikum salam. Thank you, Dato, Dr. Razib, for your closing speech. All right, everybody, we have wrapped up the Q&A session. If, again, if you have any additional inquiries, please email us your questions to id at itc.gov.my. Some questions have also been answered in the chat box uh, by uh, Ms. Fakiza. And uh, we will now move on to the part where everyone is excited for, which is the quiz session. So before my colleague uh, Silas explains the rules, I would like to take this opportunity to thank Sunway Resort, Sunway City Kuala Lumpur for contributing the prizes for this quiz. Ladies and gentlemen, the top three winners will receive a three day, two night stay with breakfast in a deluxe room overlooking Sunway Lagoon theme park at Sunway Pyramid Hotel. The, val the validity of this prize is from 19 August 2021 until 18 August 2022. So now Silas will explain to you the details of the contest. Thank you, Mr. Fitra. So everyone, you can, uh, you can get on your mobile devices now. The, the rules for this quiz are simple. You just need to answer fast and the top three winners, like Mr. Fitra said earlier, will win the prizes. So to join this quiz, you need to go to menti.com, M-E-N-T-I, menti.com, and enter the code which is being shown in the, on the top of the screen.
2500-3913. On your devices, go to menti.com, M-E-N-T-I dot com and enter the code 2599-3913. We will give some time for our participants to enter. Thank you for your patience. Again, everyone, go to menti.com, M-E-N-T-I.com, and the code is 2599-3913. 2599-3913. You can see it on the top of your screen. The website is also found in the chat box, menti.com. Those who have difficulty searching for it, you can find it in the chat box. And after you assess the link, you can type the code 2599-3913, shown on the top of the screen. Okay, we give our participants 30 seconds more to enter the game before we begin. Also, a kind reminder to our participants that the, only the top three winners will receive the prizes. So make sure to answer fast. Thank you. Answer fast and answer correctly. <laughs> yes. All right, we can start now. Okay, we start now. Okay, good luck, everyone. All the best, everyone. So, the first question remember to answer fast. What is commonly known as Malaysia's national dish? Lamsheng Briyani, Nasi Lemak. Patai or Mi Bakso? The correct answer is Nasi Lemak. 106 people got the right, the right answer. So after the first question, our top three are Chuns, Amalina, and Ainin Sufia. Now we'll move on to the second question. Get ready, everyone. Question two. 
The Songkran Festival in Thailand takes place to celebrate what event? Start of the rainy season, Muay Thai tournament, Thai New Year, or marriage of that and Karket? 10 seconds to go. Five, four, three, two, one. Correct answer is Thai New Year. 59 people got the right answer. So as of now, our top three in the leaderboard are Chuns, Ainin Sufia, and Nuru Fatima. Sorry, Nuru Fatima, Alia, and Ju. Now we move on to the third question. Question three. Where are the Petronas Twin Towers located? Jakarta, Indonesia, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, Bangkok, Thailand, Petra, Jordan. Time's up. Correct answer is Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. 124 people got the right answer. So our current top three are Nuru Fatima, Ju, and Alia. Question four. Which American president spent several years of his childhood growing up in Indonesia? Joseph R. Biden, Donald J. Trump, Barack H. Obama, or George W. Bush? Five, four, three, two, one. Time's up. Correct answer is Barack Obama. 91 people got the right answer. The leaderboard now, our top three are Nuru Fatima, sorry, Ju, Alia, and Noor. Get ready for our last question. Question five. What are the three Sunway hotels located in Sunway City, Kuala Lumpur? Pick one from the four choices below. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. The correct answer is Sunway Resort, Pyramid, and Clio Hotels. So our final leaderboard is. Alia, Nuru, Fatima, and Ju. So remember the top three, Alia, Nuru, Fatima, and Ju. Please screenshot your screen and send your, uh, your result to id at itc.gov.my. You can find the email address in the chat box provided. Thank you. So ladies and gentlemen, we have arrived at the end of the quiz. Uh, to the top three winners, again, don't forget to submit, to screenshot and submit your result to id at itc.gov.my. To our audience, we have arrived at the end of the IMTGT webinar. We would like to express our thanks to the speakers, our sponsors as well, and not forgetting the audience for their participation in making this event a success. We hope you all had an insightful and productive session, and we look forward to your presence in future webinars conducted by ITC. Now I pass on to Mr. Pichra.
All right. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of our webinar. I hope everyone had a fruitful time, productive and informative participation. Again, if you have any additional questions to ask our speakers, please do not hesitate to send us an email. We hope this webinar is the first step for the IMTGT region to work towards a greater Muslim-friendly tourism industry. And we look forward to having more discussions at the IMTGT Working Group Committee on Tourism Level as a way forward for development and sustainability. So thank you very much, everyone, for coming and participating. We really greatly appreciate your participation. Thank you. Thank you. See you next time. <laughs> thank you to my secretariat as well, Mr. Saiful, Mr. Mazlan, Hanani, and everyone else. Thank you, everyone.